Hi, I'm Rami Tamimi, and this is the iPhone 12 Pro. In the last video, we were analyzing the iPhone 12 Pro's LiDAR sensor and testing its relative accuracy in comparison to a surveying total station. By popular demand, everyone is asking me what the range is on the iPhone's LiDAR system, and does the accuracy decrease the farther along we go? In today's video, we're going to scan 200 feet with the iPhone's LiDAR sensor, and we're going to measure every 10 feet Feet along this 200 foot stretch and compare the measurements to a surveying total station. If you enjoy surveying and LiDAR videos, be sure to like this video. Also be sure to subscribe and turn on the bell notification so you don't miss out on any of the latest content. Join our Facebook surveying group. Uh, the link is in the description. We've got surveyors from all around the world sharing what they're doing and what they're up to. So check it out and be a part of the community. Now what we're going to start by doing is establishing a 200 foot line that we can place all of our stakes at. Using this tape, I'm going to drive the end of it here on this side of the property, and then I'm going to pull this tape all the way down to the other end of the property, uh, and that should give us 200 feet to work with. So I'm gonna start here and place the chaining pin. So that should give it a pretty good hold. And uh, now we're going to pull 200 feet. All right, and right there we are at 200 feet. All right, and now we need to pull tight on this tape so that we have a straight line. All right, nice and straight. And I'm going to now gently lay this tape down. And uh, this will now serve as our guideline for where we need to set the stakes. All right, now I've got 21 stakes here and I'm going to be placing one approximately every 10 feet. Now this isn't gonna be exactly 10 feet, which is why we're gonna use the survey total station to get the exact location of every stake. But for now, approximately every 10 feet, we will have one stake. So now as you can see we've set one point every 10 feet for the length of our 200 foot line. From now on we're going to be referring to that first point as station 0 plus 0, 0. Then every 10 feet it'll become 0 plus 10, 0 plus 20, 0 plus 30. Once we get all the way down to the 100 foot stake that'll be station 1 plus 0, 0. And then that last station down there, the one at the 200 foot mark. That's gonna be station two plus zero zero. We're going to be setting up the total station on station two plus zero zero. And then the back site will be set all the way down on station zero plus zero zero. So here at station zero plus zero zero, I'm going to set up the back site. I can't see the bubble, that's a problem. How am I gonna see this bubble? Hold on. Okay, uh, here we go. Now I can see this bubble, that looks good. I'm gonna point the prism all the way down to the end. All right, good. Something tells me I'm gonna need this thing again. And now here at station two plus zero zero, I'm going to set up my total station. If you don't know how to set up a total station, go ahead and check out a video that I made a while back. It goes through the details of how to set one up. And then after you figure out how to set up a total station, come back to this video and uh, continue on. All right, I'm gonna measure the instrument height from the top of the stake because I want the elevation to be at the top of the stake. Very important, okay? I come up here. I'm getting about 4.05, 4 foot .05. Now I'm gonna go ahead and take a measurement to our back site. 
And good. Okay, as you can see here, the distance between the total station and the back site is 200.05. Wow, I was only off by five hundredths. That's pretty astonishing. I did not expect to be that close, but okay, cool. We're gonna go ahead and just zero out our horizontal angle. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and set up the job on my data collector. All right, so I'm gonna move over to survey store points. Okay, we are occupying point number one, back sighting two. I've put in my instrument height and the rod height of the back sight. We'll go ahead and hit back sight, and we're gonna go ahead and check. All right, and the errors are very minimal within the thousandths. This is okay, I'm willing to accept these conditions. I'm gonna hit set angle and check. Now we have the total station down here at station two plus zero zero back sight up at station zero plus zero zero. All right, now we're gonna start measuring all these points using this rod and this bucket. Let's go. All right, so I'm gonna go and set this rod right in the middle of the stake. Press these legs down. Get up on the bucket, cause I'm short. Now this is bubbled. And our rod is at six feet above the top of the stake. This is station zero plus one zero. Okay, and we're gonna go ahead and take a measurement. All right. Next point, station zero plus two zero. All right. Middle of the stake. Station zero plus three zero. All right. Zero plus four zero. Station zero plus five zero. Six zero. Seven zero. Eight zero. Nine zero. Station one plus zero zero. All right, we're halfway done. One plus 10. One plus two zero. This is station one plus three zero. Station one plus four zero. One plus five zero. One plus six zero. Station one plus seven zero. Station one plus eight zero. Station one plus nine zero. And there we go. 21 points recorded. Um, we don't have to measure the last one because we're occupying the last one. But what we are gonna do now is uh, take a shot on station zero plus zero zero where the backside is and make sure that our horizontal angle is still zero. Okay, and now I'm going to site the backside. And uh, here's what we've got. And if we look, we have a horizontal angle of one second and our slope distance is a hundredth more, not a big deal. So we check out pretty good. All right, now that we've finished surveying with the total station, we're gonna go ahead and pull out the iPhone 12 Pro and we're going to use the LiDAR sensor to measure the stakes. All right, so the LiDAR scanner is on and we're starting at station zero plus zero zero. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit start. I'm going to come along here and start scanning and it should grab all of the stakes. Keep going. Okay. Looks good. Okay. Nearing the end here. I'm going to stop. That is our, <laughs> that's it right there. Taking a look here, I can zoom in. Man, that is our surface. You can turn on the tin here. You can see just how detailed this tin is. I'm gonna go ahead and process out the colorized mesh right now. Okay, and it looks like, yep, there it is. That is the project. That looks pretty sweet. All right, that's it. We've measured everything with the iPhone's LiDAR sensor. Now let's go back to the office and compare the point cloud that we get from the LiDAR sensor to the shots that we took with the total station. Hello and welcome to the office. All right, so I've imported both the uh, total station data as well as the LiDAR point cloud. And as you can see here, both are in 
AutoCAD Civil 3D. Now a few people were talking about why I'm not looking at the absolute accuracy of the LiDAR sensor. Why is it that I'm aligning the points to the total station points? In order to have good absolute accuracy, you need to have a good GNSS receiver. The one that you see on a cell phone isn't that great. You're going to be within several feet. The ones that we see in surveying equipment, however, those GNSS receivers are RTK enabled and can get very accurate measurements. I promise I'll be going over over GNSS receivers in a future video, but for now I want you to understand that the relative accuracy is the only thing we can look at because absolute accuracy that technology just isn't there for cell phones yet. Now again, in the last video, I talked about aligning the point cloud to the points, um, but I never showed myself doing it. So I wanna be more transparent with you and actually do it for you uh, on camera. So I'm going to type in the align command and then I'm going to select my object. So I've selected the point cloud. And now I'm gonna select the first point. I'm gonna tilt this. There we go. And the first point is the stake. And I'm gonna select this top point here. Okay. And I'm going to rotate back. And that top point is this point right here. So we're going to align to this point. Then I'm going to come to the other side. We'll rotate back down so we can see that last stake. Here's the tape at the ground. <laughs> That's funny that I picked it up. I'm selecting the top point of the stake at station two plus zero zero. And I'm going to rotate this back down and select this node. I will hit enter. It's gonna ask me if I want to scale my object to the alignment. And I'm going to say no. The reason we're gonna say no is we don't want to rescale the point cloud. If we're doing a transformation and we're you know, adjusting our point cloud to some control points, then I would say yes, totally do it. But uh, for the purposes of analysis, I wanna to try to keep this point cloud as raw as possible. So I will not be scaling it to the um, points that we shot with the total station. So I'm gonna select no, and there we go. Now the point cloud is right with the points that we shot with the total station. So now I'm going to rotate this again so that we can see the tops of the point cloud. Now this is station zero plus zero zero. This is the fence. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do again a 3D poly line and I'm going to just go ahead and select the top point here right there. It's going to come down here. There's the next stake. Select. Come up here and select Plus nine zero. Last one. Two plus zero zero. Okay, we now have our line. I'm gonna just freeze this. And you can look from top down here, here's all the total station points in red X's, and then the magenta line is the um, features that we extracted from the point cloud. I'm going to just freeze these total station points, and then I'm going to just get the point creation toolbar opened. I wanna to just create points here along this 3D polyline. So this is zero plus zero, zero. And now with all the points created, I'm going to open up my tool space. I'm gonna right click on points, export, and I'm just gonna call this the point cloud points. Hit open and okay. All right, now let's go ahead and open up the points that we extracted from the point cloud and compare them to the points that we had on the total station. So I've got here the coordinates of the total station on the left, coordinates of the iPhone LiDAR system on the right, and over here in the far right, I'm going to put the differences. So I will create a simple equation of equals the northing of the total station minus the northing of the LiDAR sensor, and I will move this across and bring it down. Just like I said in the last video, we don't wanna be looking at the points that we did the alignment with. The only thing I'm going to look at is the northing of the last point. So uh, what I'll do is I'll highlight everything except this one cell. And uh, we'll come back to this number at the end, but I want us to start by looking at the uh, first station off of the back site, which is station zero plus 10. So we have an error in the northing of 13 hundredths and then one tenth and then elevation five hundredths. Wow, that's actually not too bad. Now this is 10 feet off of where we started recording data. So um, to be off 
I would say about a tenth in the horizontal and about five hundredths in the vertical. Not too bad of a start. So let's see here. On the next one, we have an error of 0.163 in the northing, 0.134 in the easting, and then we're at nine hundredths in the elevation. So a little bit more error. Um, it seems as we've moved forward. Station 0 plus 30. 14 hundredth in the northing and then 23 hundredths in the easting and then we've got 16 hundredths in the elevation so again we continue to increase in error um, as we've moved along this gets a little interesting the northing of station 0 plus 40 uh, is actually only five hundredths in the northing about three tenths in the easting and then 14 15 hundredths in the elevation so it's about off just as much as the station before it five plus zero zero again six hundredths and then three and a half tenths in the easting nine hundredths in the elevation a little bit better not too bad Station 0 plus 6 0, 19 hundredths, 3 tenths, and 2 tenths. Station 0 plus 7 0, we have 18 hundredths, 3 and a half tenths in the easting, and 3 tenths in the elevation. Again, now we're starting to get over that uh, quarter of a foot mark. 0 plus 8 0, we have 3 tenths in the northing, about half a foot in the easting, and two and a half tenths in elevation. Okay, yeah, that's starting to get a little bit bigger in error, but think about it. We are 80 feet off of the back site. So this is 80 feet worth of measuring. I mean, that's quite a bit of distance. At 90 feet, we are at about four tenths in the northing, half a foot in the easting, two tenths in the elevation. At 100 feet, we've got four tenths in the northing, half a foot in the easting, and two tenths in elevation. So at about 100 feet, you're going to be looking at about half a foot of error. And I could keep going through all these, but it's not necessary. What I do want to look at is station 2 plus 0, 0, where it is actually uh, almost negative one foot off. Um, and so here's my conclusion after doing all this work. For every 100 feet of distance, you're looking at about a half a foot of error. And this seems to be pretty consistent because after we've gone 200 feet, we had about one foot of error. So for every 100 feet, you're gonna look at about half a foot of error. And for every 200 feet, you're gonna look at one foot of error, okay? And so what does that mean? It means that the iPhone's LiDAR system shouldn't really be used for uh, long corridor mapping. You know, this is used for small little areas like that curb that I did. And I'm looking at this data set and I could easily geo-reference those uh, total station points and have a pretty accurate point cloud. Um, and that's just a general rule. Um, you know, you never wanna just rely on the data acquisition. You definitely want to tie in your data to some independent control. So now we've answered the question. The iPhone's LiDAR system, for every 100 feet has half a foot of error. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, be sure to like the video. I put a lot of time and effort into making this content and I wanna make sure that I'm delivering high quality and accurate information to you. If you enjoy that, please subscribe to the YouTube channel. It means a lot. And turn on the bell notification so that you don't miss out on any future uploads. Join us on Facebook and share with us your experience with surveyors around the world. Thanks guys for watching and I'll see you all next time.